Hello there, it's Courtney and I am back at Anfield today. It's very windy to do an updated mural so I'm going to start right outside the main stand and literally the first one is right opposite it so I'll go over and show you a bit more about that now. So just outside the main stand as you can see and if you turn on Anfield Road you can see Ian Rush. Now this mural was done by Mayworlds, which a lot of them on this tour is going to be. Um, but this was completed at the end of the um, 22 season where Liverpool won the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. Um, and it is the most prime position for a mural as you can get. The coach goes past here, all here is always filled with fans on a match day and the coach goes in right there. But it's also looking over at the stadium and Liverpool crest so really good view. Also I did do a video on the whole process of this mural being done for Rushy. Um, go and check that out if you haven't already but um, just thought I'd tell you a bit about the making of it. So the making of it was actually um, by Mayor Walls and it took three days if I remember correctly um, and then when we done the unveiling we had Ian Rush come down and also John Aldridge which is really cool um, sort of supporting one of his ex um, teammates um, but then we also had loads of fans down, loads of um, supporters with flags down it was a really cool event so go and check out the video if you want to see a bit more of that but we're going to go on to the next mural now So from the main stand we're going to take a turn down here, past Rushy's mural and walk down Anfield Road and head towards four murals in total, just on one street alone. So now we're on Sybil Road and this is the mural that started all around Anfield, Trent Alexander-Arnold's mural by Axi. I think that's how I pronounce it, I would struggle with his name but I'll show you his little um, signature in the bottom corner if you want to go and check out more of his work. I believe he's done the Marcus Rashford one as well. Um, but yeah, this is what started it, it was with the Anfield wrap um, and yeah, it's probably is the most, one of the most well known um, murals, most iconic just because it is the scout set in the team currently and it was the first one done then i'm going to turn around and go in order of when these were done and we have jordan henderson's mural which was completed literally a few days after jordan lifted the premier league trophy back in 2020 and um, the art was actually started the morning after so um, was really cool to see it was also the first mural I saw completed in person and the first Mayor Wars mural in Liverpool which as you're gonna see in this video a lot of them are painted by Mayor Wars. So this was done with Mayor Wars and Red Men for Jordan Henderson who chose to have for all day um, put on it and you can see a little quote of anything as possible never stop believing. We then have Ian St John and Roger Hunt which was also painted by Mayor Walls and the really cool thing is Ian St John actually managed to come down and sign it. Um, quite a lot of them are signed, Henderson's is signed, um, Ian Rush's is signed and a few more that we'll go to later on are signed but um, yeah a really cool one and it's even got its own little plaque just explaining a bit more about the players and the mural and then we're going to turn around opposite that and next to Trent is a pretty new one that was actually computed in um, last October if I remember correctly um, but this is May Wars with Troy Hawk now Troy Hawk is very famous for his quote of what would Jan Mulby do so um, Jan and Troy had never actually met each other until the day this was unveiled and Troy's got a brilliant physio on that day but little panini sticker for the Denmark player for Liverpool, Jan Mulby, which it's just, this was a really cool design idea in my opinion, the panini sticker with it peeling from the top corner, just a really cool one and obviously because it was with Troy Hawk, what would Jan Mulby do? And again, both Troy and Jan to sign this one. But yeah, on to the next one now. Here's a little show of the main stand just to show how close these four murals are to Anfield. 
like I said, these are, apart from Jan Mulbeer's, some of the earliest murals that were created. And as I said, Jan's was made in October last year. Now from these four, we're going to take a walk further along Anfield Road towards the first female Liverpool player, Liverpool women's player, um, mural that has been created around Anfield. So we'll take a walk along there and show you that now. And here we go to so the first women's football player in Liverpool. I have her mural in Anfield is Missy Bo Cairns. Um, and it is right outside Hotel Anfield if anyone wants a way to find it. But yeah, this was done by Paul Curtis and it was really cool. Um, the Women's um, Supporters Club had a lot to do with this. Was, this was all they did when it is absolutely amazing to see women in football getting recognised in Anfield. And again, as you can see here, Missy Bokeans actually came down and unveiled it and signed it herself. Which I think for any of the players, seeing a mural of yourself must be absolutely mental and just unbelievable. Now from this is we're going to head down a uh, my personal favourite and one of the more newer ones which was actually completed around about the same time as Missy's which was the end of this season just gone. Um, so we're going to take a walk to that now and you'll find out what my favourite is once we get there. So here we are at what is my favourite mural um, which is Bobby Firmino's Su Senor. Um, now this one was completed at the end of the season just gone, the 2022-23 um, season. Um, but it has got a lovely few down at Anfield. For me as you can see they are all very close to Anfield but um, this for me is just a special one because the fans reaction to Bobby leaving was just unbelievable but also the story behind us making it so the two artists on this um, John Coleshaw and Liam um, John is from Liverpool and Liam Benini is from Brazil so it was nice to have two sides to Bobby on there um, someone painting from Liverpool someone painting from Brazil just showing the love for him but also um, the fact that this was all done for free um, by the artists and by Mayworlds so the artists gave up their time for free um, which is a massive thing and Mayworlds hired the scissor lift and the paint which again just shows how much love everyone has for Bobby and for the football club and these murals um, but yeah and then also him turning up on the day we unveiled it was just absolutely unbelievable very emotional day go and check out my video on that if you haven't seen it it's probably his, I will say the best video I've ever made and it was just an unbelievable experience also something else that's really cool this box is signed by people who were all involved with the um, making of the mural and then it is carried over into this grey one that everyone is leaving their messages for Bobby um, which I just think is an absolutely lovely thing to see and um, just everyone showing how much they'll miss him and how much love and support he'll always have and again like I said Bobby did sign this wall which it is cool to say most of the murals are actually signed by the players on them which just shows they must have so much love for these murals as well and also here is everyone art wise that was involved in it so we have Liam Benini, John Culshaw and Mayor Walls who have said all this was done for free. So yeah there you go a little bit of like an explaining how paying for these murals work sometimes, sometimes they're just done for free, sometimes they are paid for by people um, but yeah it just goes on a mural by mural basis how they are created and how they are funded um, to put it better than paid for um, but it brings so much to, to the area and the community that these are really good things to have. Um, but next one now it's literally right around the corner and was also made by John Culshaw who was a part of Bobby's. So here we are now just outside the King Harry um, pub just for a bit of wayfinding and we have Mo Salah again done, done by John Culshaw who was involved on the Bobby one so this is a massive piece this is absolutely huge and it has two modes and I absolutely love 
the way the red smoke of a flare is being incorporated to it because that um, that derby game when the flare got put on that picture was took was just amazing but real real good detail in this um, I just I can never get over detail in Mo's arms for example like I don't think people pick up on it but we all know Mo's got very defined muscles and you can sort of see that in this mural and obviously we have Mo there in the back of the shirt style picture and I really enjoy these two styles together I just think it looks absolutely amazing so this one was actually done at the end of the season before this one um, maybe a few months before the end of the season which is pretty cool because at that point we didn't know if Mo was going to stay Mo did decide to stay I'm not saying the mural had anything to do with it but it might have been quite a strong thing but um, I think it just showed Mo the love the city and the fans have for them um, but it is cool to see when these went up and you sort of come down them and like doing this video thinking about how long it's been there and going wow I didn't realise that um, but yeah now we're going to go around the corner our few older legends don't want to say the old but they are uh, more past players than the present ones we've currently seen here with Mo and Bobby's and Trent and Henderson. <laughs> So here we go, another one by Mayor Walls, this time of two absolute Liverpool legends, Phil Neal and Ian Callahan. Like, th these guys are going to be in Liverpool's history books forever. Phil Neal is one of the most decorated Liverpool players there has ever been. And as you can see, you can see Anfield in distance, so it is just a prime location for them. And seeing Phil Neal and Ian Callahan's faces when they came down here and saw the mural get unfailed and the amount of fans that turned up and the amount of love they were getting was quite emotional actually and they also came and signed them both so both their signatures will be on this wall hopefully forever and ever because I don't think there's any more fitting legends for the mural just because of how record breaking for the club they were and also just to explain these sort of signatures on the mural when you see these ones this is usually people who have funded the wall so it's actually funded by people that have then came down and signed it when we unveiled it which is pretty cool to be able to say one that you've signed the wall but two you're basically the reason it ended up happening which is amazing and amazing of people to be able to fund these sort of tributes to legends now from this one we are going to just continue down the road a little bit to another liverpool legend that was also painted by mayables at exactly the same time as this one now mayables are really cool for doing this they will do two murals in the same street at the same time different artists but you've got so much activity then going on it's cool to be able to go backwards and forth and see the progress each time that you go from one to the other which is really cool i say but yeah on to the next one now here we are on balfour street where we can see john barnes's mural now this one again very similar style to the ian rush one but i do really enjoy the style of a black and white image with then a full size in color image of them playing football um again this one was done by mayworld but this is just so cool these murals and again as you can see barnes himself signed it and also left a little nice message of you'll never walk alone underneath it in massive handwriting so that is pretty cool of him not only has he signed it he's put his own you'll never walk alone on it but the, this is just ma again these images are massive but the detail in them and just the amount of work that goes into them i like the the style of the way they've put john barnes on the barnes in the neon right and just looks absolutely amazing just pops on this wall in person and on the camera um, but yeah these are just really cool when we done Barnes this one actually Barnes did come down himself as you can see by him signing the wall but we also had to stand Collymore down here at the same time I see them interact with Jim was just really cool but we also um I was very happy telling Stan Collymore I was wearing my Stan Collymore t-shirt which is on that wall itself so that was pretty cool but yeah unfortunately we didn't get a wrap out of john barnes but it was an amazing experience nonetheless i just think seeing the players reactions to these sort of things is amazing and obviously as you can see by the amount of 
people that have come down to these out of like I think every mural that's been done there's maybe the odd one that hasn't had the player turn up and that's usually more current players um, just because of obviously a busy schedule with them still playing football um, but it just shows how much love all the footballers have for it and it does make you quite emotional sometimes seeing the reaction like the Bobby one I cried at Bobby's reaction and I cried afterwards at Phil Neal and Ian Callahan's one after I was going through the pictures and you could just see how happy they were um, but yeah with that one being said I'm going to be walking now back towards the Phil Neal and Ian Callahan one and head on straight up that street to our next mural which just happens to be at the end of that one and here we are at Jürgen Klopp's mural now out of all everyone in the current squad, I don't think there's anyone more to serve on than the manager himself, Jürgen. Just for what he's managed to get us to in the years he's been here. And with, if he admits uh, what little money he's had, he's just been absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, this was my favourite up until the Bobby one. I think if Jürgen had came down himself, it would have been my favourite. But unfortunately, Jürgen didn't come down this one, which... He's managing Liverpool, it's very understandable that he didn't come down, but again, this was done by Mayor Walls. Um, and it's been here for quite a while now, I'll have to go back and look at the exact date, because I am now curious of how long it's been here, but this again is a really cool one to have seen them paint, just because Hugh for Mayor Walls that painted it, it is so photorealistic, it is unbelievable, um, and it was done in connection with Boss Night, so, you know, you know we said so. Um, but this the work in this just how photorealistic it is is unbelievable so yeah like i said it does show that sometimes unfortunately the people on the murals like jürgen don't get to come down i hope at some point in the future he does get to come down because it'd be amazing to see him here um but this i feel like we all know at some point jürgen's probably gonna end up with a statue outside anfield in all honesty and um, but that wouldn't be for years and years to come yeah um so it is nice that he's got a current little honour by having a mural um, which is right by Anfield which I'm now actually going to walk back to and we're going to head over onto the other side of Anfield and check out the murals on that side. So just on the corner now by where the Anfield Road and the Sir Kelly Dagnish stands meet and I'm going to turn and walk down here past the oracles and show you the next few murals. So the first one we get to on this side of Anfield is the one in memory of Anne Williams. Now Anne's son Kevin unfortunately lost his life at Hillsborough and Anne along with many other um, parents and family members and friends of victims of Hillsborough um, were a massive part of the campaign for justice now fortunately justice has still not happened but thanks to Anne and many other family members we now know the truth and this one again was done by Paul Curtis and I just think it was lovely to say something for one of the fighters for truth and justice of Hillsborough get remembers by because Anne was a massive part of it and if you haven't watched the docu-series called Anne um, I'd highly recommend going to watch it, it just documents a bit more what she went through after losing her son Kevin and the fight for justice and truth she then went on Now our next mural is featuring five absolute legends of the club and it is on the side oh. of the Ark Hotel um, and this again was done by Mabel, so on it you have Gerard, Carragher, Fowler, Virgil and Kenny all looking back on the cop which I think is really cool to see the cop in a, um, a mural with all the flags, some of the iconic ones, this is Anfield um, trophies getting lifted by players, there's so many of them, it is unbelievable. Um, and then we have one for 96, one for Kenny, Paisley, and then in the corner over there is actually one that says Trent Corner, which is pretty cool to see. But again, just how full the crowd looks there and the players looking at it lovingly. Um, but yeah, so this one is literally just 
on the next block down from where the Anne Williams one is. As you can see, you can see the ground in the background there. So now from this one, we're going to just take a walk straight up the road opposite and get to yet another Gerard one, which isn't going to be our last Gerard one of this, but obviously Gerard's on this and he's going to be on the next one we get to. Here is an, yet another Gerard one. This one was done by Mayor Walls and it was actually done on the same days as another one at the end of this road. Now, this was the third one done for Gerard. If you include the arc, the arc was the first. Then there was another one after that, which I will show you. And then there was this one. Um, but they all are in completely different styles. Like, this is a more older Gerard, come towards the end of his time at Liverpool. Um, and it is in black and white with obviously a massive eight for Stevie a number he was synonymous with but yeah it's really cool and yeah it's just stevie what what else can you say about stevie apart from the fact he's a scouse legend and also yeah of course but with that being said i'm gonna walk now up to the top end of this street where there is another mural again done by mayor So here's our next one, which is Alan Kennedy um, holding the European Cup um, with his broken hand, quite famous European Cup final that he scored in. Um, obviously he didn't score many goals being a defender, but yeah, also again, this one is done by Mayrolls and is signed by Alan himself, but just want to say that quickly, Alan Kennedy, if you ever get the chance to meet him, is one of the nicest footballers there ever is and he will talk to you for hours about football, Liverpool, anything at all you want to talk to him about. But yeah, very well deserved um, mural for an absolutely lovely man. But from this one, which is done by Mabel's, we're going to walk around to the next one, which is just around the corner and is our last Gerard one. Also, I just want to say, while I've been walking around doing these murals, I actually bumped into quite a lot of people doing tours on them, which is really cool to say. Um, and also, I took a few pictures for people. Um, but it's just amazing to see people going around. It's like a father and daughter I've just spoken to, and the father had been explaining to his daughter who Alan Kennedy was. And I think these murals are just good so that different generations can have conversations about different players and sort of explain who they were, pass on the history um, and also what memories they have of watching them players when they were playing in their prime, the same way the younger generations are currently creating memories for the likes of Mo Salah, obviously we had memories of Bobby Firmino um, but yeah with that being said we're going to go around the Gerrards and then we've only got a few more to show. So here we are at the final Stephen Gerrard mural um, done by John Coleshaw and this one was actually voted for by fans as to who was going to be on the wall and it's on the side of the Sandon pub which the Sandon pub if anyone that doesn't know is actually the birthplace of Liverpool Football Club so when Liverpool and Everton split um, which originally they were called St. Mingo Boys. They split because of differences over alcohol licences. Um, the Sandon is where the contract was signed by John Holden for Liverpool Football Club to be created and we got the right to have Anfield as our stadium. So it was pretty cool to see Liverpool's probably most famous captain on the side of Liverpool's most famous pub. So from here we're actually going to walk around the front of the Sandon, um, which also has quite a few murals on the front of it. Um, which I'll show you once we get to it. Um, <laughs> so here we have Phil Thompson, Jamie Carragher, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Fowler, Sooners, and Ian Callaghan. So it was pretty cool to see that on the front of Liverpool's birthplace. But we're going to keep walking. And we're going to go just around the corner to the other end of the pub. Um, where we have Luis Diaz again painted by John Culshaw um, and the one show actually done a pretty cool documentary on John 
creating this. It was only a very small video, but it was really cool to see. Um, now this is <laughs> this is John's um, little tribute to his favourite player of the season for last season, uh, like best new signing. So this is really cool to see. I think personally, this is an absolute incredible piece. It looks like it is literally a photo. The detail on the skin and everything from John is absolutely unbelievable. Even in the hair, it was just a phenomenal piece. Um, obviously, must be lovely as well for Diaz only being at the club for a short period of time. But because of how instrumental he was on us going on that run for the quadruple, which unfortunately did only end up us winning the FA Cup and Carabao Cup, I think a lot of us can admit if it wasn't for this man, we wouldn't have been anywhere close to that just because of the energy he brought to the front three and the whole squad when he arrived was unbelievable and as I think a lot of us will agree last season we did miss this man through injury so fingers crossed next season um, it continues but I just this mural is just absolutely fantastic it just looks like a picture now a bit of wayfinding for this one so it is on the side of the sand and pub but anyone that knows the garage on a match day. Everyone calls it the garage, it's the meet up spot either before the game or after the game. It is right opposite that. Now I'm going to walk past the garage and take you to our last mural um, for the day which is of an absolute legend of a goalkeeper and I feel like we need more goalkeeper murals. Um, there's so many great goalkeepers we've had over the past years and the one that I'm going to show you is probably one of the best. So, we're going to take a walk around that now and then we'll head back to Anfield and I'll end the vlog there. But let's go to our last one. So here we are on Wilvia Road and this is the last mural for today and it is Ray Clement. Um, now a few really lovely things about this mural. Obviously first goalkeeper mural there was at Anfield um, and currently the only one there is um, and I don't think it could be anyone more than served than Ray himself um, and a nice thought is that Ray actually got to see this um, unveiled through videos and images um, not long before he sadly passed away um, but I feel like this is just a lovely thing for the family to always have him have to remember him um, now the family did actually come down when we unveiled it and um, his daughter and grandkids came down and signed the wall in his um, honour since he wasn't able to but it's just so it's so nice to see also we had um, Alan Kennedy and David Fairclough came down and actually painted a bit of this wall just to start the process off and um, also pay their tribute to a teammate that they absolutely adore so it is absolutely amazing and it is just in touch and distance of Anfield so if I just come here you can actually see the roof to Anfield there and the mural just here itself and the quote from um, Bill Shankly at the top is absolutely lovely where he has everything he's quick he doesn't want to be beaten he's just a great goalkeeper and a great goalkeeper he was um, 665 appearances absolutely amazing but that means I'm gonna walk back to Anfield and have a little um, chat about the murals with you so back outside Anfield now completed the Anfield Memorial Tour for 2023 um, but there is always more to come with these murals so no doubt next season I'll have a bunch more to add on to the list for you um, but let me know down below what's your favourite mural is there any that means something special to you like I said Bobby for me is a very special one um, also who do you think should get some murals? Now, I always say I'd love for Kenny Zaglish to get one um, at Anfield properly. I think that would be amazing. Maybe some people from the boot room. There's a massive list of people for Liverpool Football Club who rightly deserve a mural. But we just need to find the wall space and we need to get them like put up. But yeah, um, with that being said though, I'm going to go. I hope you're enjoying your little break before the football starts back up again obviously pre-season does start this month um, so won't be long until the Reds are back in action but with that being said I'll see you all next time bye